إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed the praise is for Allah We praise him, we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead this person astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray, there is no guide for him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah who was alone with our partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of Allah and his last messenger to all of mankind. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with. And do not die in the Shua Muslims. O oh, mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear Allah from who you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you indeed Allah is a watcher over you all you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement. As to what follows, certainly the most truthful speech is the Book of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion. And every newly invented matter in the religion is innovation. And every innovation is going astray, and every going astray is in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَ وَالدَّرَّاءِ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولُوا الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, do you think that you're going to enter into the paradise and you will not be tried and tested with the likes of that which those who came before you were, taught, were tried and tested with. They were afflicted with difficulties and hardships and harm and they were shaken to the point that the messenger and those who believed with him they said, when is the help of Allah going to come? And then Allah Azza wa Jal, He responded, indeed, the help of Allah is near. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies for us. 
that there is a price for paradise. There is a price that we have to pay in order to enter into the paradise. And that price is that we have to go through trials and tribulations in this worldly life. The paradise is not for free. We have to earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us to be entered into the paradise. And that's not something that's just going to come to us for free. So we have to go through trials and tribulations, hardships, difficulties in life. For this is the same which the people of the past from the previous nations, they went through these things. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation. That he tries and he tests the believers. Starting from the prophets and the messengers to the believers that are with the prophets and the messengers. They go through hardships. They go through trials and tribulations. They go through difficulties in life. Every day is not going to be a good day in the sense there's not going to be a test or a trial or a hardship or sickness or other than that. Prophets and messengers were tried. Yusuf alayhi salam, he was imprisoned, he was an innocent man. Ayyub alayhi salam, he was sick for 18 years, he didn't commit a crime. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was placed into the fire, all because of la ilaha illallah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam persecuted, exiled from his homeland, all because of la ilaha illallah. The stories of the prophets and the messengers and the believers with them are there in the Quran. They were not criminals, they were not sinners, but this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the people must be tested. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this as a reminder, so that we do not think that we're just going to enter into paradise without any trials, without any tribulations, without any tests. And sometimes the trials and the tribulations, they become severe. To the point Allah mentions that the messenger and those who believe with him, they said, when is the help of Allah going to come? And indeed, the help of Allah is near. This shows us, barakallahu fiku, that when the trials and the tribulations come, our dependency should be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be seeking the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can remove the trials and tribulations. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for the people to go through hardships, no man, no government, no one can remove what Allah has decreed to be except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important that we always return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the aid, the success, the victory, the removal of the hardships, in trials and tribulations. And Allah, He lets us know that His help is near to us. We just have to be patient. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He mentioned, أَشَدُّ nas بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الصَّالِحُونَ ثُمَّ الْأَمْتَلْ فَأَمْتَلْ That those who are afflicted with the most severe tests are the prophets and then the righteous and then those who are like them, and then those who are like them. The sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see a people going through hardship, don't automatically think that this is because of sins. At times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He afflicts the people with hardships and difficulties because of their righteousness, so that they can show patience, so that they can return back to Him and increase in their ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, مَنْ يُدْرِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُصِبْهُ مِنْ Whoever Allah wants good for, Allah afflicts him with hardship. Allah places upon him difficulty. Allah sends a calamity on him. For what? To destroy him? Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that when Allah, he tests the righteous people, is not to destroy them, but is to raise their level. Because when they are tested, they display patience. They turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with righteousness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَعَلَمْ 
أن النصر مع الصبر وأن الفرج مع القرب وأن مع العسر يسرى No, have knowledge that victory comes with patience. Relief comes after affliction and hardship. And ease comes after the difficulty. Indeed, with the hardship, there is an ease. Indeed, with the hardship, there is an ease. The scholars, they mention a beautiful benefit. Hardship here is definite, so that means one hardship. And ease is indefinite. So that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives two eases for one hardship. But never, and never does one hardship overcome two times of ease. But it takes sabr. فَاسْبِرُ كَمَا صَبْرَ الْعَزْمِنَ الرُّسُلُ Be patient like those men of firm resolve from the messengers were patient. This was the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be patient upon the hardship and the affliction he was experiencing. But patience means barakallahu fikum. As-sabru ala ta'atillah was-sabru an ma'asiyatillah was-sabru ala aqdari illah al-mu'limah Being patient and being obedient to Allah this is a part of patience. That you have to maintain your obedience. A part of patience is being patient and staying away from the haram. This is patience. A part of patience is being patient upon what Allah has decreed to befall us of difficulties and hardship. This is patience. So when we are commanded to be patient, and when the Prophet mentioned that victory comes with patience, all three categories are intended here. Victory comes to us when we are obedient to Allah. Victory comes to us when we stay away from disobeying Allah. Victory comes to us when we are patient upon what Allah has decreed. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'in. Amma ba'd qala Allah azza wa jal. Wa ma asabakum min musibatin fa bima kasabat aydikum. Wa ya'fu an kithih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions. And whatever has befallen you of a calamity, it is from which your own hands have earned. A person may say, wait, doesn't this contradict the other verse, the ahadith? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Man Whoever Allah wants good for, he afflicts him. But here in this verse, Allah is saying, whatever has befallen you from an affliction, it's from what your own hands have caused. Alhamdulillah, there are no contradictions in Islam. This verse where Allah speaks about whatever has befallen you from a calamity or affliction is from what your own hands have earned. This is in relation to the people who are sinners. Those who are disobedient to Allah. Those who ignore the practice of Islam. When they are afflicted with the calamity and hardship, it is due to their sins. Different from the righteous people. When the righteous people are afflicted with calamities and hardship, it's because Allah loves them and Allah wants to raise their status. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to increase in iman. But as for the people of sin and disobedience, the people of corruption, when the hardships and the afflictions descend upon them, it is due to their crimes. It is due to their sins. It is due to their disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the greatest calamities, and the people ignore this, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from you the religious blessings. This is a calamity. People think calamity is only poverty. People think calamity is only sickness. People think calamity is only death. This is calamity. But calamity is also losing your religion. Calamity is also losing that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ad-Duhaq, 
رحمه الله تعالى هي منشن ما نعلم أحدا حفظ القرآن ثم نسيه إلا بذم ثم قال وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى وما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم ثم قال وأي مصيبة أعظم من نسيان القرآن سبحان الله الضحاق رحمه الله تعالى he stated we do not know anyone who has memorized the Quran and then he forgot the Quran except due to sin and then he mentioned the statement of Allah and whatever has befallen you from a calamity is from what your hands have earned and then he went on to say and what calamity is greater than the calamity of one forgetting the Quran losing religious blessings is a calamity and never does a person lose the religious ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through sins and transgression. Qala Allah azza wa jal Ma asabak min hasana fa min Allah Whatever has befallen you of good, it's from Allah. Wa ma asabak min sayyah fa min nafsi And whatever has befallen you of evil, it's from yourself. The good is from Allah, the evil is from us. The good is from Allah, the evil is from us. Allah Azza He mentions, Inna Allah la yadhimun nas shay'ah. Allah doesn't wrong the people at all. Walakinna nas anfusahum yadhimun. However, it is the people who wrong themselves. We cannot blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the evil that has befallen us. We are to blame. We are to blame for our humiliation and the evil that is before us because of our sins. But if we are righteous in hardships and hardships and trials and tribulations before us, then this is a test from Allah to raise our level. But if we are not righteous and the evil befalls us, this is from our sins. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu he mentioned, ma nazala bala illa bi dham wa la rufi'a bala illa bi tawba. That no affliction, no calamity has descended upon the people except due to sin. And the affliction or calamity will not be raised up from the people except with tawba except with repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qala Allah azza wa jal, wa anistaghfiru rabbakum, thumma tubu ilayh, yumatti'akum mata'an hasana ila ajalim musamma. And seek the forgiveness of your Lord, and then turn to him in repentance. He will cause you to enjoy a good enjoyment in life for an appointed term. Having a good life comes after seeking Allah's forgiveness, comes after turning to Allah with tawbah, seeking the forgiveness for the crimes and the sins that we have committed, turning to Allah with tawbah so that we do not fall into these matters again in the future, turning to Allah with tawbah so that Allah does not call us to account for the wrong we have done. This is when the provisions will come, the good provisions, for an appointed term. Allah, he goes on to mention, And then Allah will give every person of virtue his virtue. After the istighfar, after the tawbah, after seeking forgiveness, after repenting, this is when the good will come. This is when the fadl will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابِ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ But if the people they turn away, if we turn away, if you turn away, then indeed I fear for you the punishment of a great day. 
Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Allah gives us the remedy to rectify our affairs. Allah gives us the remedy to remove the calamities that are in our lives. Tawbah istighfar. The good will come. But if we turn away after knowing that it is upon us to repent and turn to Allah repentant and seek Allah's forgiveness, if we turn away after knowing this, then what is for us except for a punishment on the great day of judgment. My noble brothers and sisters in Islam, please understand these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the words of the scholars of al-Islam as it relates to that which we see going on in our personal lives and going on in the Muslim ummah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to the Muslims in their personal lives and give victory to the Ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist our brothers and sisters who are weak and being oppressed throughout the lands. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our sins and wrongdoings and to remove the calamities that we are experiencing in life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who receive the good provisions from him until the appointed term. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa subhanaka allahum wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, akim as-salam.